Hello, everybody. Today we are focusing on Wisconsin Indian Section 5 and the boarding schools. Um, you know, if you think your school is strict, well, wait till you learn about these. These were very strict schools. They really limited the rights of Wisconsin Indians in many situations uh, and, and cut back on creativity and culture. And so we're going to look at what these schools were like um, and how they compare to today. So you can open up your notes to WI5 and we will begin. So to begin, um, children from Wisconsin Indian nations were required to go to school. That wasn't really a choice for them. And they may be sent to parochial schools or boarding schools. And this starts in about the mid 1800s. So there's three different situations depending on where you live. Number one, some go to boarding or parochial schools on the reservation. Parochial school is a religious school, kind of like St. Francis is. Um, so sometimes those were on the reservation and you may live at home. Um, some go to boarding schools and live away from their family during the week. Sometimes they had to go to a school that was far away um, in the state. And so you might be living at that school during the week and then on weekends come home to your family. So for example, if you look at the Ho-Chunk, uh, they had one school in their area, which was in Toma. And so you might have to go a long ways to Toma, live there during the week, and then only see your families on the weekend. And the third situation we see is that some are sent to schools in other states, sometimes as far away as Pennsylvania. It's a really long ways. And, you know, you don't necessarily have the choice. You're, you're forced to go to school um, and it may not even be in your hometown. Sometimes you have to be away for a week or even the whole school year, depending on where that is. So as I go along, feel free to pause it if you need to fill your notes in along the way. I totally understand that. So the goals of these schools, well, goal number one is to provide skills and basic education, just like any other school. Um, they're going to be very basic, how to read, how to write, basic math, um, and then they're going to work on a lot of skills in terms of maybe, um, you know, something like sewing for women and taking care of the home and cooking and things like that. For men, they may focus on things like carpentry or blacksmithing very, um, I guess you'd say stereotypical jobs for each gender and, and how they operate. Uh, but they did provide some skills that kids may not have otherwise had. The second goal, as sad as it is to say, was to eliminate American Indian culture. They wanted them to become more like white Americans. And today I kind of cringe even saying that, like you're trying to remove their culture. But in the 1800s, the idea was that, you know, American Indian, Wisconsin Indian culture was backwards. It did not provide the skills that you need to survive. It didn't use the land very well. That was the concept that a lot of people felt. And when they looked at Christianity and they looked at white Americans and how Americans were living, they said, hey, this is a good religion. We live in a good way with farming. Let's teach American Indians how to be like us because we are better. And so you're going to see some things were put in place to make American Indians seem more like white Americans. And we look back on this and frown, um, but it was seen as a good thing back then by many people. So uh, when you look at that skills and other things, here you have a homemaking class, Holy Family School in 1933. Uh, you know, girls would learn how to take care of the home, how to take care of their family, because that was seen as a role for a woman in traditional American society in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. So removing the culture, how do we see that the culture is removed? Well, it, it's in small and big ways, um, but this would really be hard for you if you had to live in this environment. Students could not use their own native language. They had to speak English. And think about this for a second. Some of these kids are coming from a home that speaks Ojibwe. Um, <laughs> you speak the Ojibwe language, you don't know English and you go to school. You can only speak English. Well, you don't know English. So... Until you learn English, what do you get to say? Nothing. And so you're punished if you speak your own language because they feel you should only speak English, which is pretty rough on a culture. Number two, students cannot express traditional culture. So you couldn't do the things that you traditionally did. If you were a Potawatomi and you had certain cultural things that you did every day, uh -uh, that's gone in school. You can't do it. It wasn't allowed. For example, boys having their hair braided is very traditional in American Indian society, those would have been cut off. And that, that would be 
very disrespectful to the you know Native Americans, but that's what happened because you didn't have a choice about these schools and you had to go to them. Third, students learn about Christianity and not Native faith beliefs. Uh, people at these schools believe that Christianity was the one true faith, and therefore they felt that everybody should follow it. And they saw this as a good thing. Um, they didn't necessarily believe in the believe in the native beliefs on religion, and so they wanted to turn them towards what was good, and they felt that was Christianity. And so all of these things are going to lead to a decline in American Indian culture. It's very hard to keep the culture going if your kids are forced to learn something else. And make no mistake, this is part of the plan. They knew if they could convert children to be more like the typical American, they could change the society. And so that's what they did. And for parents, they didn't really have much choice. Your kid was forced to go to school. Sometimes, you know, a kid would see a mom crying when the bus took them away and uh, she's crying because she can't do anything about it. And so you literally, as parents are watching your kids go to an environment that is focusing on things you don't want your child to focus on but you don't have a choice, which is pretty sad. So some of the ways they work on culture. Right here, they're having a mock wedding. Seems like a fun activity, right? You have to look behind the scenes a little bit in terms of what's going on here. Why are they having a mock wedding? Because they're trying to teach American Indians, this is the right way to get married. At home, you may get married this way and do these things. That's not how we do things. The Christian way, the right way, is to have a wedding like this. And so it'll be like activities like this and things where they would teach them about the American ways of how to live. Basketball. Everybody likes basketball. It's a great game. Showing them an American sport and helping them to understand, you know, these are the things that you do if you're an American. And so going away from maybe the activities they did as American Indians. Uh, if you look at the clothing choice in this picture, very traditional clothing for the day. And so you wouldn't wear your traditional clothes that a Native American would wear. You have to wear the traditional clothes that normal everyday Americans in that area would wear. Um, and so it's not okay to dress the fashion of your culture. So what's the focus in school like? Well, the first three here, I think you have five in your list. We have a half days focused on academics and a half days focused on manual labor. There is a big focus on manual labor because the thought process is that a lot of Wisconsin Indians would be doing manual jobs, which they probably did to start. So for women that may be sewing, and ironing and cooking, those kind of things. For men, like we said, is blacksmithing and carpentry and different jobs like that. Academics focused around reading, writing and math, just really the basics, they didn't get too far beyond that. And boys and girls are training jobs that they'll likely work in. So it's very much a vocational school. We're going to train you for the things that you're likely to be a part of. The problem with that is, is that that limits what you can do. If they're giving you just basic reading, writing, and math, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. You have to do manual labor because you don't have the skills or the knowledge to do other things. And so it did, it did provide an education, um, but it certainly wasn't extremely well-rounded, I guess you'd say. So here are some pictures. These come from Washington State, but the, the concept's the same for Wisconsin as well. On the left here, you have women doing laundry and tailoring, uh, pastry cooking and sewing. On the right, you have boys making shoes, making wagon wheels, working with blacksmithing, so jobs they might see in the world around them. The other two parts about the school day, it was a very rigid schedule. Your entire day is scheduled. There's no breaks necessarily more than just a few minutes. So they're always telling you this is what you have to do. So it was very hard to be creative because you didn't have much free time for it. And unfortunately, we do see a lot of evidence that students face physical abuse. Uh, they're often beaten and yelled at, different things like that. When you listen to the NPR audio, you'll see some examples of that, which are, which are pretty sad. So here is uh, a quote from Helma Ward. She says, two of our girls ran away, but they got caught. They tied their legs up, tied their hands behind their backs, put them in the middle of the hallway so that if they fell, fell asleep or something, the matron would hear them and she'd get out there and whip them and make them stand up again. So some pretty nasty conditions. I know I read another story where um, a guy did something wrong. I don't even remember what he did wrong, but they threw him in a basement. 
and they told him to crawl around on the, the, the dirt floor on his hands and knees. And the kids didn't see the, the kid that was put in the basement and they came back the next day. Well, they never came to get him. And so all night he was so scared of what the teachers might do to him that he crawled around on the floor on his hands and knees and they were all bloody from all the movement. Um, but it shows that in some situations, kids did not receive very good physical treatment um, and that could lead to some trauma within their own lives. So the sample schedule, this is really interesting to look at. Now, again, this is from that website from Washington, but you see a lot of things in Wisconsin that are the same. 545 is revelry. Get up, get ready. You do some exercise for about you know 15 minutes. Get your beds aired out. A little recreation time to move around. 645 is breakfast. Assemble at 655, you get 10 minutes. I don't know what that is. Um, you know, 10 minute a roll call there. You get a few minutes for breakfast. Brush your teeth for five minutes. Make your bed. Police your quarters. Make sure everything's where it should be. Um, you're going to do some industrial work for about two hours. Um, things like that. Uh, then you're going to go to school, have an inspection. Um, you're going to give about 20, 20 minutes of free time. Lunch or dinner is at 12. At 12 30, you have some recreation time for 20 minutes. Um, go back to work or school, whichever the situation is. You're called back at 515. You assemble again. You have supper. Take care of your teeth. A little free recreation time for an hour. You're called back in for inspection. You're given a, a lecture where people from the community come in. You retire and you go to bed. So from 545 to 9 p.m., 545 a.m. to 9 p.m., you're told what to do. There's only a few little spots there where you have any free time at all. So very different than what we know, you know, with our eight o'clock until 3.30 schedule, this is a 5.45 to nine schedule. And that's a big day. Uh, some other problems we saw, sometimes students that were sent away to these boarding schools far away from them were exploited. Um, Lucy, for example, an Ojibwe worked for, in a home for 12 hours a day for six days a week and she received $1.25. Um, wow, that's crazy. And, you know, she's getting a few cents an hour, and the rest of the money is probably going to other people within that school. So sometimes you see exploitation during the summer. But we're going to see the major changes start in the 1930s is the first major change, and we'll look at those in a second. So your first major change in the 1930s is that boarding schools are closed. What is the result? Well, it seems like a good thing the boarding schools are closed because there, there are some problems there. Well, that means that kids get to go to the public schools if they're allowed in. And the problem there is in the 1930s, there's still a ton of racism towards Wisconsin Indians. And so when they do go to the public schools, they face a lot of discrimination, sometimes from students, sometimes from teachers, sometimes from both, which is pretty sad. The second change we see, this is a good one in 1972, the Indian Education Act is passed. And this provides tribal power over their own education system. And the ending result is that a lot of Wisconsin Indian tribes, they create their own schools, they create their own curriculum. And you saw the Waduka dotting video at the beginning, right? So instead of you know learning about the traditional American ways, you get to learn about your Ojibwe culture or your Potawatomi culture. And people within your nation, your tribe, get to decide this is what's important for our kids to learn about. So when it comes to public schools in Wisconsin, people in your area get to decide the main ideas of, okay, this is what we're going to focus on. People in Ellsworth get to decide that. This is kind of the same thing for Wisconsin Indians. In 1972, they can make their own schools and really focus on what they feel is important. And that's good. So in the end, there's some positives and there's some negatives to the, the boarding schools. Um, here's a quote that kind of talks about those. On the reservation, there was no electricity or running water. So, you know, where Native Americans lived, there wasn't really water or electricity. So conditions were pretty bad for them there. When kids came to the boarding schools, they had these things, showers and clean clothes, and they ate decent food. My mom died when I was 13 months old. I stayed with my grandma who wasn't well. My main criticism of the boarding schools is that it didn't allow you to go do your own thinking. You marched everywhere. You were governed by the bell and bugle. 
You were told when to go to bed and when to get up. Your whole life was governed. As a result, you didn't learn how to become an independent thinker. And so you have the positives that your physical needs are taken care of at the school. You can sleep, you can eat, you have clean clothes, you have showers. All those are very good things that these schools provided. But the negative aspect is you had to learn a certain way. You had to learn certain things and your family isn't a part of deciding that. And so in the end, you're, you're, you're told what to do all the time and you never really figure out how to think for yourself. And that's kind of a tragedy we see in these schools, along with the physical harassment and the lack of understanding for culture. So that's what we have for the basic notes. On the bottom of your note sheet, it talks about adding in a few things you learned from the NPR video or audio. So you're going to click in your notes. There's a spot to click to open the audio. You'll see something that looks like this. And if you click listen on it, um, it'll play some audio for you. And it's, it's an interesting story. They, they talk to different people who went through boarding schools and what their experiences are. And they talk to some people today who are in a boarding school who say they want to keep them, not because it takes culture away, but because boarding schools now for Wisconsin, well, for Native Americans, sometimes allow you to keep your culture alive. So that's what we got. Uh, you can listen to that NPR audio, and then you can go on to work on the journal for this section. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to talk to your teacher. Have a good day, everybody.